Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Make sure your hand don't touch any of the metal prongs on the cord plug. If you do so, you could get an electrical shock. Use alligator clips on your voltmeter test probes. This way you won't have to worry about an electrical shock since you won't be touching the dryer while it's connected to the wall outlet. Make sure the dryer is disconnected from the wall outlet before proceeding. Remove the terminal block cover to get access to the terminal block. The terminal with the blue wire is L2. The one with the white wire is N and the one with the yellow and black wires is L1. Set your multimeter to check AC volts higher than what you're checking for. Connect one of your voltmeter test probes to terminal L1 and the other test probe to terminal L2. Connect the dryer to the wall outlet and don't touch the dryer after that. Just take a look at your voltmeter. The reading should be about 240 volts. If the reading is less than 200 volts, the problem could be a blown fuse or a trip circuit breaker in the house. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet again. Connect the voltmeter test probes between terminals L1 and N. Connect the dryer to the wall outlet and don't touch the dryer after that. Just take a look at your voltmeter. The reading should be about 120 volts. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet again. Connect the voltmeter test probes between terminals L2 and N. Connect the dryer to the wall outlet and don't touch the dryer after that. Just take a look at your voltmeter. The reading should be about 120 volts. If any of the two readings is less than 120 volts, the problem could be a blown fuse or a trip circle breaker in the house. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet again and check for loose or burnt wires at the terminal block. If everything is okay, just install the terminal block cover. Also check the cord plug to make sure that the terminals are clean. Any discolored terminal is an indication that there is a loose connection on the wall outlet and you need to have it checked out. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Make sure your hand don't touch any of the metal prongs on the cord plug. If you do so, you could get an electrical shock. Remove the front panel. Lean the dryer against the wall like this, making sure that it's secure. Disconnect the black wire from the heating element. Some have quick disconnect terminals and others have holding nuts to secure the wires. Set your multimeter to read resistance. Take a reading between the terminal you removed the black wire from and the other terminal on the heating element. The reading should be between 10 and 30 ohms. When you use an analog meter like this one, the reading is going to look like 0 ohms. As long as the needle moves close to the zero, the heating element should be okay. If the reading is infinity, the heating element is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the heating element, remove the two gray wires from the thermal fuse and the purple wire from the high limit thermostat. Remove this screw on the rear of the heating element and this one on the front. and remove the heating element. Place a piece of rug on top of the dryer to use it as a bench. You will need to remove some parts from the bad heating element to install them on the new heating element. Remove the high limit thermostat, the front cover plate, and the thermal fuse holding bracket. Install the thermal fuse holding bracket on the new heating element. 
install the high limit thermostat connect the wire to the heating element terminal and install the front cover plate now the heating element is ready to be installed in the dryer set the heating element in place and screw in the rear and the front holding screws connect the wires to the thermal fuse the high limit thermostat and connect the black wire to the terminal on the heater install the front panel and you're done checking and replacing the heating element disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet make sure your hand don't touch any of the metal prongs on the core plug if you do so you could get an electrical shock remove the front panel remove the purple wire from the high limit thermostat take a reading with your own meter between the two terminals on the high limit thermostat when the temperature inside of the dryer is less than 175 degrees the reading should be 0 ohms if the reading is infinity the high limit thermostat is bad and you will need to replace it to replace a bad thermostat remove the other wire and remove the thermostat install the new thermostat install the brown wire on the bottom of the thermostat and install the purple wire on top of the thermostat install the front panel and that's it that's all it takes to check and replace the high limit thermostat Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Make sure your hand don't touch any of the metal prongs on the core plug. If you do so, you could get an electrical shock. Remove the front panel. This is the location of the cycling thermostat in the blower housing. To check the cycling thermostat for continuity, remove the purple wire. Take a reading with your own meter between the terminal of the purple wire and the terminal of the red wire. When the temperature inside of the dryer is less than 155 degrees, the reading should be 0 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the cycling thermostat is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the cycling thermostat, remove the holding screws and the shield and leave the wires attached to the thermostat. Install the new thermostat on the shield. Transfer the wires from the old thermostat to the new one, one by one. This way, you know that you put in the wires on the right terminal. Install the front panel. That's all it takes to check and replace the cycling thermostat. According to the wiring schematic, when you select regular, medium or delicate on the temperature switch, there should be continuity between the blue terminal and the red terminal on the temperature switch. Let's get ready to check the switch itself. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Make sure your hand don't touch any of the metal prongs on the core plug. If you do so, you could get an electrical shock. Set the temperature switch on regular, medium or delicate. Disconnect the blue wire from the temperature switch. Take a reading with your own meter between the terminal that you removed the blue wire from and the terminal with the red wire still attached on it. When the switch is set on regular, medium or delicate, the reading should be 0 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the switch is bad and you will need to replace it. If the switch needs to be replaced, make a sketch on the location of the wires before removing them. 
This way you'll be able to install them in the right terminal on the new switch. After making the sketch, remove each one of the wires from the switch. Use a flat screwdriver like this to remove the temperature switch knob. To remove the switch, grab it with your left hand and place a flat screwdriver here and twist it to compress the holding tab and then pull the switch out. The terminals on the switch should be marked, but it's a good idea to always make a sketch or take a picture to be sure when we're installing the wires back on the new switch. To install the new switch, set the tab on the left side in place Push and compress the holding tab on the right with a flat screwdriver until it snaps in place. Use the sketch you made before to install the wires on the new switch. Put the knob back on the switch and install the controls back panel. That was how to check and replace the temperature switch. Let me show you how to test the timer when the dryer won't heat. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet and keep it disconnected. Remove the timer knob and the two holding screws. Put the timer knob back on the timer without the screws and set it on the cycle you want to check. Remove the knob again and set the timer in a position that is easy for you to do the test. Use a flat screwdriver to remove the pink wire. Take a reading with your own meter between the terminal of the pink wire and the terminal with the black wire on it. And take another reading between the terminal of the pink wire and the terminal with the blue wire on it. The reading should be zero ohms on both readings. If the reading is infinity on any of the two readings, the timer is bad and must be replaced. Remove the controls back panel. Pull out the timer knob. Remove the holding screws. And take out the timer. Make sure you leave the wires attached to it. Install the new timer and the holding screws. Make sure you have it the right way. Install the timer knob. Turn it around clockwise only to make sure that the timer turns OK. Use a flat screwdriver to remove the wires from the timer like this. Transfer the wires from the bad timer to the new timer one by one. This way you'll put them in the right place. Install the controls back panel. That was how you check and replace the timer. To check the motor switch, you need to make a test cord to run the motor direct. Use an oil appliance cord or an extension cord. Strip the two wires about one and a half inches on each end. Twist the wires and bend them like this. With a soldering gun, apply solder to cover the tips of the wires like this. With a hammer, flatten the tips of the wires like this until they fit inside of a female quick disconnect terminal like this one. Let's get ready to use the homemade test cord. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Make sure your hand don't touch any of the metal prongs on the cord plug. If you do so, you could get an electrical shock. Remove the front panel. To remove the door switch, stick your hand behind the drum support panel like this and push on the door switch until it comes out. Then remove the yellow wire. Now go to the blower housing, to the thermal fuse, and find the wire with the number 51 stamp on it, and remove it.
Now you have the 51 gray wire from the thermal fuse and the yellow wire from the door switch. Connect the test cord to the gray and yellow wires and put electrical tape to insulate them. Connect one of your old meter test probes to the terminal of the black wire connected to the heating element, like this. Plug in your test cord to a heavy duty extension cord. Tape the dryer cord to the blower housing. This will make it easier to take a reading. Press the push to start button on the dryer and let it run. As you can see, the dryer is running with our door, with our door switch, without the timer. That's because we're using the test cord connected directly to the motor circuit. Connect the other ohm meter test probe to one of the flat terminals on the cord like this. Then connect it to the other flat terminals on the cord like this. One of the two readings should read zero ohms and the other one should read infinity. If both readings read infinity, the motor is bad and you will need to replace it.